Good morning, everybody. So how long have I been saying they have to become a kind of gentler cult? Uh, 12 years. Told you so. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you're right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. But, you know, meeny, meeny, Tico Parson. How is it that you and I have been able to say this for so many years? Because the 1914 business model is dead. Yeah. And that's right. They have a little bib on themselves right now because they're actually bleeding members. They, they have no choice. I've been saying this for years. I mean, for crying out loud. Anybody who's really been paying attention and awake to this whole nonsense, you would see that even though they're trying to become kinder generally, they're still putting pictures of dicks in their magazines. Well, we talked about doing the subliminal image, yeah. you know, of the Good Samaritan picture. Yeah. And here's the picture for those of you who haven't seen it. What covers, when you're pulling covers up, looks like that right there in his crotch? Yeah, but see, there again, you know, it, every XJW is going to read this article and think, Oh, look, they, they become kinder and gentler, but you, you don't realize this is not going to change their mindset, their mindset, any more than they're going to stop putting phallic symbols in their artwork. It's not going to happen. A leopard does not change its spots. Well, we've got the new August Watchtower just came out and we can see now why it was delayed because there's some major things in here and some tiny little footnotes that Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going to be reading. And like mentioned, Mike mentioned, it's not going to change the attitude of JWs. Do you think our moms are suddenly going to contact us and say, Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. My bad. You know, we, we love you and want you to come back to Jehovah. No, the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to have the same mindset, no matter what they put in their articles. And I told Mike this morning, I said, This tells me that they are getting their behinds handed to them in the courts and in these government commissions and even in the video I just did the other day with Shane I even said we know there are more changes coming I didn't know it was going to be this soon I thought you know it was going to take a while but well let me interject something right here about two months ago I got a call from apostate jerky boy talking about the last thing that they changed and he's a very perceptive person and he clued me in and says, pay attention, they're going to be making these changes every two months, and here we are now, about two months, and yeah. here's another change. It, it may be a little word whisker, but they're still gaslighting everybody. It was the beard and grooming. Oh, that's right, the beard and the grooming. Gro yeah. Beard and the dress grooming yeah. about two months ago, so, yeah. you know, he's right. Anybody who's really, really in tune and paying more than the usual attention, you can see precisely that Kim and I have been right for years. So anyway, we've got this magazine and it is available on JW.org and it, it, forget the cover, you know, that the cover was the big secret because it, it's just a picture of the prodigal son, but what's in it is the biggie. And so there's several articles and it's the study article and so we're going to be covering this, and we've got some notes. Have you got your notes? This script wrote itself a decade ago. <laughs> I don't need any notes because it's, you know, just like Watchtower's attempting to regurgitate this crap, I don't have to regurgitate anything because it's already here. Well, the biggest thing is we have been saying for years they're going to have to become a kind of right. gentler cult because they are getting lambasted in these courts and by the government. Well, here again, a point to note. How many years ago was it that they get rid of the theocratic ministry school? They, they had to drop the word school because if you were operating a school, then your elders would have to go through a background check. And we all know that most elders can't pass a background check. So instead of calling it the theocratic ministry school, what is it, the Christian ministry life meeting? You know, whatever the hell... 
nonsense that they come up with. Anybody who was awake back then could see where this whole ex, this whole Jehovah Witness nonsense was going to go. Yeah. Now, the questions from readers, we're going to start there. Is the marking described at 2 Thessalonians 3.14 an action taken by the congregation or by individual Christians? Now, for those of you that, you know, weren't in the Jehovah's Witnesses and don't know, um, if you did something that didn't quite merit a disfellowshipping, but you had to be marked because you were asking questions... Um, the elders would give a marking talk. In fact, one of the very first videos we did about 12 years ago was a from a woman who sent us a secret recording of the meeting where they gave her a marking talk. And she was only studying with Jehovah's Witnesses. She yeah. wasn't even baptized. But they did a marking talk talking about apostates right in the congregation mm -hmm. and asking questions yeah. and causing dissension. That was a marking talk. Didn't we even entitle that the Salem Witch Trials? Salem because Witch this, Trials. this was like back east where this was all taking place. Yeah, she place. was from New England. Yeah. yeah. Anybody could have watched that video and said, look, now they're even going to start marking non-baptized Bible studies. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah. It's not rocket scientists because it's a business model. Yeah. All right. So that was the question. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Thessalonica saying, if anyone is not obedient to our word through this letter, keep this one marked. Okay, wait, our word? You mean the cult? Starter, the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Our word? Our word? You think it would have been Jesus' word. You think it would have? If, if Paul was a true Jesus freak, he, he would be quoting Jesus himself. But no, you can see how Paul is starting the Pauline Christian congregation. Yeah. Previously... <laughs> This is going to be said a lot in this magazine. Previously, we said that this was direction to the elders. If someone continued to ignore Bible principles in spite of repeated counsel, the elders might give a warning talk to the congregation. Thereafter, individual publishers would not socialize with the marked one. Okay, now wait for it. However, an adjustment is needed. Paul's counsel evidently, <laughs> yeah, evidently refers to an action that individual Christians, and that's in bold print, should take under certain circumstances. So there's no need for the elders to give a warning talk. Why the change? Consider Paul's counsel in its context. And then they go into the explanation, you know, the pretzel twisting, you know, that they do. Pretzel twisting, gaslighting is more appropriate because that's what this article is doing. It's gaslighting its members. Yeah, exactly. Now, the next start study article 32, Jehovah wants all to repent. And it's like, you can go read that one if you want. But, <laughs> yeah, I am going to go down to 33. 30, study, study article number 33. Wink, wink, there's nothing Freemason about this whatsoever. How the congregation reflects Jehovah's view of sinners. <laughs> no! Okay, end it. it. It's over. How does Jehovah view sinners? He protected the murderer, Cain. He put a hedge up around Cain. Because Cain was whining that the mobs are going to get him. That's how Jehovah really feels about sinners. He puts a hedge of protection around them. Well, look at King David and King, David. King Solomon. Yeah. The baby, Murderers. The baby died of David yeah. and Bathsheba. It was, you know, punished. Yeah. But not David, not Solomon. Okay, now what I find interesting is the very first sentence in this article is Jehovah created humans with free will. Now, <laughs> if you don't understand free will, go look it up in the definition in the dictionary. Um, 
if you have free will and you decide to leave the congregation, but you're punished for it, how is that free will? Or if your family member is punished because they decide to continue that relationship. Oh, wait, oh, I, I, my bad. I just can't talk about spiritual things. I.e., you can't talk about the congregation in a negative uh, way. So even the person, like my mother and her mother, they have no free will to discuss these articles with us. What? Again, gaslighting. Yeah. Now, here on page 17, um, paragraph 11. If the brothers and sisters in the congregation refuse to forgive the repentant sinner, they would put their own relationship with Jehovah in je jeopardy. Why? Because they would reflect not Jehovah's forgiving attitude toward repentant wrongdoers, but Satan's harsh and merciless attitude. <laughs> they would, in effect, become tools that the devil could use to destroy the man spiritually. Okay, now let me ask you. We couldn't make it to our judicial committee. Right. Because you were out of town. Right. But they harshly disfellowshipped us anyway, instead of changing it to when you were going to be here. Uh, doesn't that make them, the elders of the Taharis congregation, tools of Satan? Tools of Satan! Just Reverse saying. Reverse the narrative and you people will see exactly and precisely who and what Jehovah's Witnesses are. They can write all the gaslighting articles they want, or regurgitate all the gaslighting articles they want. It's not going to change their mindsets. Yeah. Do you think the elders in Teharis are going to contact us and say, oh, we're sorry, we were really harsh and didn't, you know, put your feelings and considerations, yeah, consider your feelings and sorry, you know, we disfellowshipped you because you couldn't make it to the judicial hearing. What is it they, they used to say years ago? Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> now, the next study article, number 34, responding to sin with love and mercy. <laughs> now, all of us are going to laugh about this because we know how the elders have treated all of us who are ex-members. Even now, I just got a report and heard... And for those of you who don't know, Warwick Pimo is suing Watchtower now in Mozambique. And I'll put the link down below to the news report because of the way they have treated him and harassed him and persecuted him. A shining example of love and mercy, saith the Lord Jehovah. Yeah. And Warwick Pimo, um, in <laughs> CO, I think his name is, I hope you win. Yeah. I hope you win. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go down to page 21 now. This is a biggie. We need trumpet blasts or drum roll or something because da, 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 da. this is big. Page 21, paragraph 4. How the elders assist those who get involved in serious sin. Okay, now remember, and it even mentions, when you commit a sin, there was three elders, and we called it a judicial committee. Now, Watchtower has been getting lambasted by yeah. the governments and the commissions that are investigating them, and even the Australian Royal Commission called it their own judicial system because that's what it was. They took it into their own hands. Well, guess what? They're changing that term. <laughs> We've seen that coming. Yeah. Just like they changed the term you know, the theocratic ministry school to the Christian life and ministry meeting, whatever it is. Yeah. See? So paragraph four, when someone in the congregation commits a serious sin, the body of elders select three qualified brothers from among them who will serve as a committee. Now remember, there was a leaked video several years ago with Robbie. The same thing. There was yeah. three elders that were appointed to cover his serious sin. You mean fish tank Robbie? Yeah. Mike, can you briefly give the brothers an idea about Robbie Friend's predicament? He spoke to Greg and me this morning before the meeting, stating that he had committed fornication with a non-witness girl about his own age. Commendably, he came forward on his own. And by the way, he says that he did tell Bob about it last night when he got home from work. 
Thank you. So, Robbie has confessed to an act of pornea, which means we need to select a judicial committee. Yeah, he was seduced by the that. Fish tank. <laughs> you know, slut Lucy. Come over and look at my fish, would you? <laughs> yeah. Now, right after that sentence is an asterisk. So when you go down to the bottom of the article, the, this is what the asterisk says, and this is a biggie. In the past, these groups were called judicial committees, but since judging is only one aspect of their work, we will no longer use that expression. Instead, we will simply refer to this group as a committee of elders. Okay, listen real carefully. They said we will no longer use this expression. Does not mean that when you commit a sin, it does not mean that you're going to go before a judicial committee. Because they said that's just one aspect. All they're doing is gaslighting Jehovah's Witnesses by getting rid of a distinctive terminology. Just like years ago, um, in front of my mother, I made a comment about worldly people, and my mother says, Michael, Michael, we don't use those words anymore. Just refer to them as non-Jehovah's Witnesses. They're still, in the mindset of Jehovah's Witnesses, worldly people. Just like this, they, they can put all the little footnotes and gaslight all they want. They're telling you they're just going to change terminology so that when they go before some judge, some court around the world, they can say, well, see, we don't refer to them as a judicial committee, but you're still going to be judged. Yeah. Gaslighting 101. Mark my words. So page 22, paragraph 9, the elders try to determine the circumstances that led up to the sin. Now, I wanted to mention this because in our particular case, um, the elders did show up and they were throwing accusations out and Mike was at work. I was here alone and I said, don't ask me these questions, go ask his mother. She's the one that called the elders. You know, this is hearsay. And they're trying to ask, do you believe the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave? I believe that you believe it. Yeah, they believe they're the faithful and discreet slave. And, you know, they just kept interrogating me and interrogating me. And the thing is, is when they, I still didn't give them much information, but then they send this letter to show up for your judicial hearing. They never once, you know, tried to find out what had happened. You know, the elders did show up. And why are you showing, you know, others the negative stuff in the literature? And Mike says, I'm not the one that put it there. You I, guys did. Yeah, I didn't put what that, that, put that it stuff there. there. Yeah. So, I didn't tamper with the Bible. They did. So when they go in this paragraph, you know, for the elders to find out what happened and the circumstances and all of this, you know, paragraph 10, by asking meaningful questions without being unnecessarily intrusive, <laughs> the elders kindly draw out the wrongdoer and help him to reason on his course. It, it, wrongness of his actions, it's like, we're not the one that put this stuff in the Watchtower literature. It was Watchtower. Yeah. The elders strive to imitate Jesus. Uh, no. Baloney. They don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. They don't. In imitation of Jesus, the elders are not hasty to conclude that a wrongdoer will not repent. We didn't even get a chance. So this is why we do YouTube videos. Well, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I don't need any notes. I, I just need to speak from the heart because I know precisely what's going on with this particular article. Yeah. Now, we are going to go down to the next study article, number 35. Help for those who are removed from the congregation. <laughs> the script has already written itself. Yeah. Now, it starts with the subheading, Remove the Wicked Person, paragraph 3. 
When a wrongdoer is unrepentant, the elders have no choice but to follow the direction found at 1 Corinthians 5.13 to remove the wicked person from among yourselves. Okay, one, because of my health issues, we couldn't even go to the meeting. We never talked to Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, very few came out here to visit us. I never talked to them on the phone or anything. So, you know, it was just a bad situation. And then Watchtower wonders why some of us leave and speak out, even my own family. Why can't you just move on with your life and not speak out against <laughs> Watchtower? Yeah. Uh, well, because that, this wasn't fair. That right, that right there should tell you internally they're conflicted. Yeah. They, they're already conflicted internally. The problem is, is they don't have the wherewithal to act upon that internal conflict. Yeah. Just leave it in Jehovah's hands and Jehovah will take care of it in his due time. Yeah. So this is another biggie. Yeah. Need another trumpet blast. Page 27, paragraph 4 and 5 with some footnotes. When an unrepentant wrongdoer is removed from the congregation, an announcement is made to inform the congregation that he's no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, they've actually been doing that for quite a while. Right. That's so, nothing new. Yeah, that is nothing new because they just said he's no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses because they got sued in the past for saying they were disfellowshipped. Right. Okay. Hashtag footnote. We will no longer refer to such one as being disfellowshipped. In harmony with Paul's words recorded at 1 Corinthians 5.13, we will now refer to them as being removed from the congregation. And there you have it. Excuse me. Pardon me, Kim. They're not doing away with the disfellowshipping policy. They're doing away with the word whisker. See? They're not doing away with it. When you commit these gross sins, they're still going to remove you from the congregation. They're just not going to say, Mike and Kim have been disfellowshipped. But the end result is the same. So now, let me qualify this, if I can. Years ago, there was a gentleman that came into the Cottonwood congregation, never even seen this guy. This guy's name was Rick. I went up to him, hand out, uh, put out my hand to shake his hand to introduce myself, and the first words were out of his mouth is, I'm disfellowshipped. Oh, okay, fine. But, how's that going to work now when somebody's removed and you're going to walk go into a kingdom hall? What are you going to do when somebody sticks out their hand to shake it and introduce themselves? Are you going to pull back your hand and say, I've been removed? It's the same freaking thing. Well, remember, the frog in the boiling water. This there is you go. Because several months ago, they had a video where it was okay now to greet a disfellowship person when they show up at the Kingdom Hall. But that's as far as it's going to go. Yeah. Because the mindset of Jehovah's Witnesses and anybody else that fully indoctrinated with the Pauline Christian thought process is they're going to know that bad associations spoils useful habits. Well, along those lines, in this same paragraph at the end, it says, um, you know, to stop keeping company with that person, not even eating with him. See? That direction is given for good reason. The Apostle Paul wrote, a little leaven ferments the whole <laughs> batch of dough. And yeah. that's exactly how Jehovah's Witnesses feel. So all they're doing is just changing terminology. They're not changing policy. Because their policy is based on Pauline Christian theology. Well, like they say right after the, you know, hashtag for the footnote, the purpose of that announcement is not to humiliate the wrongdoer. Rather, it is made so that the congregation can follow the scriptural amount and admonition to stop keeping company with that person. Nothing changes, friends. Yeah. Do you think our moms are going to show up and say, hey, sorry. Hello. No. And no. Like we keep saying in the frequently asked questions on JW.org. Do you shun family members? No. Well, yes, then somebody better tell our moms 
that they are going against the organization and they're being used as tools of Satan for not, you know, having the loving, new, light attitude that they obviously want now. The only thing that's going to come out of this is going to be seen maybe 10 or 12 years from now when it will be confirmed. Even though they're changing the words and appearing to become a kinder, gentler religion, oh, excuse me, cult, they're going to be before the courts of the land once again for their abusive nature. A leopard will not change its spots. And even if you raise a king cobra from an egg, it will still grow up, bite you, and kill you. These people, especially at the top, are mocking every single Jehovah Witness that's reading this thinking that this big change is coming. They're mocking you because they know you... To walk through this with a critical with, with critical thinking you know and after that part about disfellowshipping then they go into this thing about kinder gentler elders and we all know that's like an oxymoron it's not gonna happen there are some good elders and you know who have a, a really good heart and who would try you know to do their best but then there's others that are so harsh and cruel and abusive and unfortunately, there's more of them in the organization than there are kind ones. But just like Jesus said, get out from among them if you do not want to share with her in her sins. So if you've got good elders out there, Kim, that are still sitting in these elder bodies, you're not taking Jesus' advice to get out from among them. Yeah. So here on page 28, I want to read something here from paragraph 7. Like I said, they're trying to become a kinder, gentler cult. And we've been saying this for years. Yeah. The elders strive to reflect Jehovah's compassion as they deal with someone who has been removed from the congregation. For example, Jehovah did not wait for his wayward people in ancient Israel to take the first step. Rather, he took the initiative to reach out to them even before they showed any sign of repentance. <laughs> so, in imitation of Jehovah, Christian elders genuinely want the wrongdoer to return, and they do not make it difficult for him to do so. <laughs> do you think if I called the elders or showed up at the meeting, they would welcome me or greet me and want to talk to me? No, they'd probably call the police. <laughs> well, here again, there, there's such a thing called as having too much knowledge. Yeah. And that's what this is, because when you have the knowledge that most of us XJWs um, have, you can't go back because you're too awake with too much knowledge. Yeah. Exactly, and that's why they don't want ones like us in the congregation. And that's why they tell members not to watch uh, apostate videos because we have truth that they're not going to have on JW.org. We have their old literature that they view now as apostate literature. And they won't even look at this old stuff and what they said in the past. Well, that's because we're... We're in front of a camera calling out the lies. Just like in certain political realms, one politician may say something that's an absolute lie and someone else will call that lie out. Yeah. We're doing the same thing when it comes to Watchtower. We're calling out the lies. And once you do that, you cannot logically and conscientiously go back to that organization because you know well, like Jesus said, they're a den of vipers. And vipers, just in case you didn't catch it the first time, will kill you. Well, like Shane said the other day in the video we did, um, we were all taught to tell the truth. Yeah. We would go to the doors preaching the truth. In the congregation, when you're talking to elders, you tell the truth. 
and look at where it gets some of us, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, it gets us on the other side of the camera like we are right now, telling the truth about Watchtower. Hey, Watchtower, did it ever occur to you that we are now a product of your own gaslighting and bullshit? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. We yeah. are a product of this because we have a conscience, and our conscience dictates to us we can't conscientiously lie to benefit our own selves. Well, look at how many elders and circuit overseers gaslight and deflect. They all do it. There you go. They all do it. So our kids are on their way out here. We're going to have a 4th of July barbecue. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all of you watching and our new subscribers. If you can, please like and subscribe. Well, this is a 4th of July Independence video. Look at all of the flares and the sparklers that I just sent up. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at it this way. This is the United States Independence Day. All of us XJWs, we have declared our independence yeah. from this cult. No matter how kinder and gentler they want to become, we all know that they're all the seven-headed snake. Yeah. They're slippery and they're poisonous and abusive. So enjoy your independence yeah. from them and you can now you have free will. Yeah, and you now, can live your life. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So thank you and we love all of you and you have a wonderful 4th of July. Bye. Bye.